Elena's being quiet today. I wonder if I'm projecting my bad mood onto her. She never bothers me whenever I stand here with a scowl on my face. Not like I have to talk to her. Sometimes a whole week goes by where neither of us say anything except a good morning and goodbye. She's a young woman in the peak period of her life and I'm a dried up old man. Okay, John would get on my case for that. You're barely in your 40s. If you're an old man, it means I'm one too. And I'm sure as hell not getting into that boat with you. Still, there's a limit to how much you can humor me with conversation. Or how much I can bore her with it. A few quiet weeks go by. A young man gets apprehended for the Jensen murder and confesses to the crime. It says it was an impulse. What a goddamn awful impulse to have. My bad mood passes and things get back to normal. You've got some color on your face today. You think so? Yeah. Good for you, Dave. I don't feel particularly happy or anything, but I guess anything above depressed is a pretty good state to be in. Elevator Girl must have said something nice to you today. I don't bother replying. If I so much as sneeze, John will think Elena's involved somehow. John clocks out around 7 or so, and I leave a couple hours later once all my work's done. I know I shouldn't think like this, but peaceful times worry me. You know Murphy's Law? All the time, I feel that if I let my guard down, all hell will break loose when I least expect it. Come on, David. Don't think about this stuff. I close my eyes and try to think about something more positive. A warm breeze. White sandy beaches. Shit, I shouldn't think about the beach. Oh, someone's leaving at the same time as me? Must be someone from the pharmaceutical company. They're the only ones who ever seem to keep late hours like I do. I've run into the scientists a couple of times. Oh, Detective Carmichael. Helena, what are you... I cut myself off, feeling foolish. Obviously she's leaving work just the same as I am. I've never seen you leave this late before. Well, I normally leave earlier, but... I made a mistake at work today and it took some time to fix everything. What kind of mistake had you there this late? I miscopied some papers. Well, to be fair, I was just following orders. I ended up taking the fall for a superior's mistake. Sounds pretty rough. It's, it's nothing compared to what you do, I'm sure. Do you usually leave this late? Something like that. I don't like leaving things half done. <laughs> I can believe that. You seem like the meticulous type. You think so? Sure. Once we reach the lobby, we can see the heavy rain outside. Damn. I didn't bring an umbrella. I'll see you later, detective. Try to stay dry. Thanks, Elena. You too. I'm not sure I can keep my word on a night like this, but I make a mad dash for the Skytram station anyway. The next day rolls around. I get the feeling that I had bad dreams last night, but I don't remember them. <laughs> Typical. You seem troubled today, detective. You didn't catch a cold from the rain, did you? No, nothing like that. I had some trouble sleeping, that's all. I see. That's too bad. I'm about to reply when I notice that we've gone well past the 54th floor already. It'll be at my stop soon enough. W wait, we've, we've passed your floor. What? Oh, no! I, I know I pushed the button for my floor. I must have not used enough force. Sorry I have to wait a little while longer. That's alright. I'm in no rush. Oh, 
Looks like it's time for you to go. See you tomorrow, detective. Yeah. Maybe. I step out of the elevator, not intending to say anything else. I don't want to get the girl's hopes up or anything like that. I'm just an old man. If she's interested in me at all, she shouldn't be. Minus 100 points, Detective Carmichael. Huh? Why does that sound familiar? I turn around just as the elevator door starts to close. What was that all about? <laughs> Dave? Oh, John. Was that the elevator girl? Hmm? Yeah, that's Elena, alright. Elena. Why does that name sound familiar? I've never told you her name before? Nope, it just never came up, I suppose. Elena. Elena. I wonder why John seems so fixated on her name, but I'm too tired to press the issue. Well, see you later, Dave. Don't stay here too late. I mean it. Good night. Be careful on your way home. You too. Come on, I'm always careful. After John leaves, I stretch my arms above my head and sigh. Today was a long day. The electricity in the office goes out, surrounding me in darkness. I feel a pain between my ribs, and then there's nothing else. Wait, what? You've reached the normal ending. Try playing the game again to see if you might be able to get the true ending and shine some light on the situation. What? That's... Wow, so the normal ending is just that you do something wrong and then she just murders you, basically. <laughs> and that's it? What? Well, that's a mood killer. I was really into the game so far, but... I, I really don't like it when games do that sort of stuff, where you have to, like, replay the whole thing to, to get an ending that is actually decent. Because an ending where you just die, and that's it. And it's the end. <laughs> that's such a terrible ending. It says normal ending, but it should actually say the horrendous ending that isn't any fun at all. Um... Okay. Well? I only had a couple of options. I think I had maybe two options. Uh, two places where I could have actually picked different things. I guess it's those things that change what happens? I mean, it must be, because those are the only places where I actually have any control. That is really, really bizarre. Well, game's over. Goodbye. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Alright, I guess I'll play it again. Um, skip to when something different happens, and... Yeah, I guess I'll be right back. Okay, so here is where I made my first decision, and before I greeted her, when she was looking deep in thought. So this time, I'm just gonna leave her be. And let's see what happens. I don't have anything I really need to talk to her about, and she looks pretty preoccupied, so... I suppose I'll just leave the girl alone. Okay, so I think that's the end of that, and everything, everything else is gonna be the same, so let's do the skip again. Um... No, don't load! That's weird. The skip looks like it kind of stopped working? Oh, this... Right, right. Okay, so Skip actually just skips until the first point where something new happens. So it's actually kind of an intelligent Skip. Alright, so this is actually new. Um, yeah, so John's asking, you know, did I talk to her today? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, she's fine, I guess. We didn't talk today. Letting her pass you by, yeah? That's the way it should be. She should mingle with guys from her own generation. You don't give yourself enough credit. And you give me too much. Anyway, jokes us. Okay, so now this, yeah, this is back to the old stuff, so let's skip again. 
And it should, yeah, here we go. So again, before I try to cover up, this time I'm going to go ahead and explain. To tell the truth, the boy actually disappeared once a few weeks ago. My partner and I were hired to find him. You mean to say something happened to him even before this? Yes. After a few weeks, we found him, but he had no memory of what happened while he was gone. At any rate, we were just satisfied that he could be reunited with his family, and then this happens. That's so sad. I can't even begin to imagine how his family might feel right now. Oh, but is it alright for you to be telling me all this? I can't see that it would hurt anything. Just don't go blabbing about it to anyone, I guess. I can trust you with that much, right, Elena? Of course you can, Detective. I don't really have anyone to tell, anyway. What do you mean? Hmm? Oh, sorry, it was nothing. What a peculiar girl. I wonder if, like me, she feels alone at times. She wouldn't have said it like that if it wasn't something that bothered her, right? So how was the elevator girl today? You seem awfully concerned about her, John. As usual, I suppose. Alright, this is the same so far. Let me see if it changes. Uh, yeah, so that's the same. Widening your horizons. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so let's skip again. Should automatically stop when I hit the first new thing. Alright, there we go. There we go. Okay, whoa! What? <laughs> uh, I got the same ending? Okay, so I did the... Uh, there's only two places where I actually have any options. And I did the opposite thing, so that means I need to do a combination of the opposite thing on one of them, and then this... What the heck? Uh, alright, I'm gonna try again. I'll be right back. Okay, so this time I'm gonna try greeting her, like I did before, but then I'm actually gonna tell her the truth about the case, which I didn't do before. So let's see what happens with that. Yeah, go ahead and explain. Alright. Let's see. I kinda wanna see what actually... Oh, wait, 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 this is new. Okay, yeah, here we go, here we go. Now something new is actually happening. So this is, yeah, they're going out into the rain. Uh, damn, I didn't bring an umbrella. And this. He must be crying today. What? I'm sorry? You just said that someone must be crying today. He. What did you mean by that? Uh, oh, uh, it's nothing. Really, just something I... She trails off. I've never seen Elena this melancholy before. Oh god, more decisions. Welp. More chances to die, I guess. I wish there was like an autosave made at these points. I can't I can't access the options menu and save when I'm actually in these menus, though. I can only do it when I'm not making a decision. Or wait, can I go back? Oh wait, wait, I can okay, so I can actually go back. Let's do that. Alright. Um, hmm. Do I press her? Let's wait for her to continue. There's no point in forcing an answer out of her if she doesn't want to tell me. With the rain this heavy, I'm not exactly keen on rushing out into it, so I can afford to wait. After some silent moments pass by, Elena finally decides to continue. Promise you won't laugh. Not a hard promise for me to make. When I was little, my father died. I'm sorry to hear that. But before he did, he told me something. He said he'd always be with me if I couldn't see him. He said that if it's sunny, it means he's smiling down at me. And if it's raining, it means he's crying? Something like that. 
I never could stand it when my father cried, even then. I wonder what he's sad about today. A man who had no shame in crying in front of his young daughter? That's pretty impressive in its own way. Sounds like he had a very sentimental father. <laughs> yeah, he was just that kind of person. He stuffed me and my siblings' heads full of stories. Even now I remember a lot of things he told me that hold our memories close. I suppose it's childish of me to believe in such things, but to forget would be disrespectful. To forgive would be even worse. Your father really cared about you. It's obvious that he raised you well, seeing what a good person you are now. <laughs> Thanks, detective. That's grand of you. Well, looks like the rain's letting up, so I won't keep you any longer. See you tomorrow? I've never said such a thing to her before, but it just feels right somehow to say it tonight. Does it make me sound too eager? Is it foolish of me to feel like this young woman and I are building rapport? Yes, I'm sure you will. We're making a habit of running into each other, aren't we? I'd say we already made that habit months ago. I guess you're right, detective. Well, see you tomorrow then. I guess you're right, detective. Weird. I'm feeling a sense of deja vu. Was it from that? Well, Elena and I have talked a lot over the last few months. No doubt she said that to me before. You know, Detective Carmichael, I think you've got to be the most interesting fellow I've ever met in my life. I wish my children could get to know you and learn from you. Macmillan's talking to me again through the double-sided mirror. I don't know how he does it, but he always knows when I'm there. With a sigh, I switch on the intercom. You want your kids to learn from the man who brought you down? I thought you were supposed to be a genius. Think about it. They could learn more about me from studying you. You know me better than anyone, don't you? That's how you could catch me. You had to, uh, get inside my head. Is that the jargon? He sounds amused even though what he's saying should be disturbing. And how did you like it? How did I like what? The view from inside my head. His tone suggests that he's offended I didn't get his meaning immediately. It was a dark place. I'd like it very much if I never had to go back there. I suspect you never will. Not after this. Hmm, you're... What, 26 this year? Don't give me that look, David. If you know so much about me, don't you think I'd read up a bit on you? I didn't think you had time for stuff like that. Why not? I had plenty of time on my hands. Still do, in fact. I contemplate Ashura and the Kingdom of Heaven constantly. It would be better if you spent that time thinking about all the innocents you killed. Nonsense. Thinking about the dead isn't very productive at all. I only humor you a bit during your interrogations because they won't let me talk to you otherwise. He laughs heartily, as if he just made a brilliant joke. If it wasn't for you, I'd have to talk to those stuffy prosecutors all day. Very dull business, that. And what about my age? Ah, so you are curious. When I don't respond right away, he looks just a little bit disappointed, but presses on nonetheless. I was just thinking that 26 is a nice age to be. I suspect that you may have many years left ahead of you. Before what? Oh, before you go to hell. It's a shame, really. Would have been great fun having you in heaven. But I'm afraid you locking me in here isn't getting you many points with God. When you get there, Macmillan, tell your god that I think he's pretty fucked up. Minus three points for vulgarity. 
but plus one point for starting to acknowledge his existence. Maybe you'll make up for your negative points before you die. That would be delightful. A buzzer sounds from behind me. His family's here to visit him. They're allowed to do so exactly once a month for about half an hour. I can't help but hope that what he tells them is more pleasant than what he's always telling me. I awake from a dream, from a memory, covered in a cold sweat. I grope around in the darkness looking for something, anything, but grasp nothing but air. I've had enough of this. I don't give a shit if Ashura is the real god. I don't want to think about it anymore. I don't want to remember anymore. I have to work in a few hours. Better get back to sleep. You seem troubled today, detective. Okay, so this is the same dialogue as before. Except this, this time we actually got to see what his bad dream was. Because he mentions that he had trouble sleeping, right? He had some trouble sleeping, but before we didn't actually get to see what he was dreaming about. His nightmares. So let's skip until the first new thing. Oh, wait. It's not skipping, so I guess this is new? Well, I mean, this isn't new, but maybe it's about to lead to something new? Let's see. Um, this might be new. You should leave work early today, then, if you're still feeling tired. I hope work isn't too busy today. Yeah. You know what? I think I will do that. We don't have any big cases to work on anyway, so it won't hurt anything. Sorry to worry you all the time. You shouldn't bother so much with an old man like me, Elena. Aw, I don't think of you as an old man, detective. Well, I stopped to think of how to respond to that. I noticed that we've gone well past the 54th floor already. It'll be my stop soon enough. Wait, we've passed your floor. Alright, so this is the same thing so far. Gotta wait. Uh, don't mince. She doesn't mind spending more time with me. I think she wants to murder me. Um, is this new? I think this actually might be new. I'm serious. You ought to spend some more time with fellows around your own age. I remember the look on her face when Elena told me she had nobody to talk to. She doesn't deserve that. Elena deserves someone who will make her feel better when it rains, and her father's crying. She doesn't need someone like me who can't even move on from his past. Step out of the elevator, not intending to say anything else. Maybe I was a little too harsh. Oh god. Does this mean I'm dead again? <laughs> Minus another 100 points? Please no. Okay, so this is all going to be the same, right? Yeah. Um, hmm, so won't well, let me skip, so maybe this is still new. Alright, Elena, Elena. You keep tabs on the other companies in this building, don't you? Her name probably came up once or twice. Huh. Which company does she work at? Pluma? It's a travel agency, if I remember right. She's a secretary. You always remember, right? Pluma, huh? I don't remember a travel agency being in this building, but I could be wrong about that. It's been a while since I've checked. Which floor is she on? The 54th floor. She missed her floor by accident today. She normally gets off before I do. John's eyebrows furrow in confusion. 54th? There's no way. What? Why not? Nobody can work in the 50s in this building. The floors have been sealed off for ages because of some incident from before. A fire or something. They never got around to fixing it all. What? How can that be pu- Well, you've seen her get off on the 54th floor every day, right? Oh, right. I didn't even think of that. Leave it to an old man to jump to conclusions. Yeah? Looks like a normal office hallway to me. I think I would have noticed if the floor was condemned. They might have fixed it up recently, then. But like I said, it's been a while since I've checked. Dave? Huh? 
Oh, yeah. I'm sure you're right. Still, I can't get all this off my mind for the rest of the day. Something's nagging at me. Something big. Minus 100 points, Detective Carmichael. I've only ever known one other person to say something like that to me. Come to think of it, her eyes are the same color as his. In a horrified daze, I start going through my files, pulling out all my information on the South Shore killer. I haven't looked at these files in years. With my vivid memories, I thought there was no need to. I had John organize the files for me, and then put them away. I even had to dust them off a bit before I sit down. Avery McMillan, the South Shore Killer, murdered almost 50 people that we'd know of because he wanted them to go to heaven. He was a fanatic about a religion nobody else believed in, and I caught him. I worked with hired guns and used dirty government money to set up a perimeter and finally track him down. And yet, he knew I was on his trail. Everyone always wondered why he insisted on killing people at the beach, even when he knew we were onto his pattern. But even after we knew, he eluded us. He would take advantage of camera blind spots, or use other people as shields. It's as if he was taunting us, declaring silently that even with our knowledge, we couldn't catch him. In the end, though, we still did. I led the team that put him behind bars and delivered the death penalty to him. I watched, expressionless, as they injected him with a poison that would kill him almost immediately. In his last moments, I'm sure he was thinking of his god. Avery McMillan, known as a loving father and a good husband. His neighbors liked him, and nobody seemed to think badly of him at all. He had three children who adored him, two twin boys and a girl. My heart almost stops when I see the daughter's name, and yet part of me isn't surprised at all. The puzzle pieces fit perfectly, but all too late. Elena. His daughter's name is Elena McMillan. Frantically, I go through the files more. I knew that. I watched countless times as his family visited him. How could I forget something like that? How could I forget something as important as that? Memories begin to float to the surface. Memories I'd forgotten, that I'd been forced to forget. I watch, a sick feeling in my gut, as Avery McMillan tells his daughter that he will always be with her. After the trial, his family is put under protection to prevent them from being massacred, literally or figuratively, by the rest of the world. I watch the McMillan family file quietly into the back of a van. They are driven away on a rainy day, the day Avery McMillan is executed. My memory of them is wiped after that. I know that they exist. I remember his family, and yet, I don't. I don't remember six-year-old Elena's deep green, unfeeling eyes. I don't remember her father telling her never to forgive or forget. Never to forgive or forget me. Just as he wished, she got to know me. Maybe even learned from me. The electricity in the office goes out. And yet, despite the odds, I'm in peace as the Macmillan's god tries to take me. Okay, so this is the true ending. I guess that's it. Now I'm curious, are there any other endings? I mean, before it was the normal ending, this is the true ending. Could there be another one? There was one place where I could have made a decision that is different. It's also a survey, but um, I'll fill that out later. Uh, hold on, let me see what happens. Alright, it goes back here, so what if I do this? So this is where I made my decision. What if this time I wait, uh, press her for details instead of waiting for it to continue? Um, it's probably not gonna... I'm probably just gonna end up dead again. I doubt it's gonna do anything special. 
Let's see, let's see what happens. She won't say anything more on the subject. Okay, so if you press her for details, she just doesn't say anything. Yeah, it looks like that's it. Yeah, looks like that's all the same. And then I, I probably just end up dead, I'm guessing. <laughs> yep, alright, straight to the normal ending. Alright, well, let's go back to the menu. And let's see what is unlocked in the extras. A sort of Q&A in the music room, what is this? Congrats on unlocking the true ending, thank you! Okay. Um, do I actually want to go into this? Originally came up with the ideas for the visual novels as a school project. Oh. That's cool. Whoa. Elevator takes place in the future. Uh, if you Google the Green River Killer that David mentions, you'll see that he was an actual person who killed so many people in the 1980s and 90s that he's considered to be America's single most prolific serial killer to date. I did not know that. I've actually, I, don't, I can't ever remember hearing the term Green River Killer. Okay. Somewhere between 2400 and 2600. Huh. Alright. Do I want to go... Hold on, how long is this? I don't know. Do I want to go into this? Because this is probably something better experienced yourself if you're playing it, I'm thinking. Looks like it's just lots of backstory. Okay, so I'll leave that for you to experience if you'd like to um, check that out yourself. Um, so yeah, just a little bit of a summary. That was pretty dang good. The, um... The art in particular is very good. It's a creepy little kind of mystery detective thriller sort of thing. It's got pretty damn good music, too. Really, the only thing I didn't like about it is the utterly asinine nor so-called normal ending that just kind of came out of nowhere and suddenly, hey, you're dead! Congratulations, start the entire game over again. Thankfully, it turns out to not be that big of a deal because you can just do the skip, which it turns out skips stuff super, super fast. And in fact, I think you can even speed it up even more. Yeah, auto forward speed to super fast. Yeah. So it's actually not that big of a deal to get back to some place where you have to make a decision, such as right about here. Here. So it's actually not that arduous to. Uh, go back and make a different different decision, even without a save point. So that was nice. Although the fact that I had to do that in the first place is not so nice. It's pretty absurd. I really don't care for that sort of design. Where, I mean, it's called a normal ending, but it's not really an ending. I mean, let's be honest here. It's not an ending, it's a stopping. I know that might seem like a silly distinction. But... It really is just a completely unsatisfying stop in the story. It's basically the same story that would have happened with the true ending, except you simply experience less of it. You know, you don't get to see the detective's, um, like, the bad dream that he's having. You don't get to hear her, her talk about her father. And all that stuff just doesn't happen. It's not like it leads to a different but equally interesting conclusion to the story. It just leads to less of the story. So it's really just an unsatisfying stopping in the story, rather than really an ending. So it's really weird that that even exists in there. I don't know, it just felt completely... completely unnecessary. I mean, it's a visual novel, you know, it's not a game... Visual novels are not typically based around skill or anything like that. Or... You know, I mean, it's not a strategy game, it's not an FPS. I, I don't think of visual novels as a, a type of game that really demands skill from the player, or, you know, the sort of thing that has a win or lose state. The sort of thing that has failure states. It just felt completely out of place and really weird. But again, actually getting back to where I had to make different decisions to change the course of the story was thankfully not that big of a deal. Just very, very bizarre. But other than that, uh, I think it's a... a delightfully short and to the point little kind of detective mystery thing. I'm really starting to appreciate shorter games more and more now, since I think most games are far too long and just end up becoming... end up feeling pretty old by the time you finish it, and you, by the end I just often want them to be over. So it's really nice to have a sh you know shorter form games that are more to the point and don't outstay their welcome. 
And again, really good music and really good art. And I know that the developers behind this, Cyanide Tea, I believe they have a bunch of other visual novels as well, from what I just saw from looking around their website really briefly, so I think I might go check those out and see if they have anything else interesting as well. So, that has been The Elevator. Once again, it's made by Cyanide Tea, by these people here. It is completely free, and once again, if you'd like to play it for yourself, there will be a link in the description. Thank you for watching. I was just thinking that 26 is a nice age to be. I suspect that you have many years left at... Shh, fuck. <laughs> there you go, being modest again. Hello, Don, I am... Wait, we've, we've passed your floor. What? Oh, no, I know, I pushed the button for my floor. I must not have used enough for... Oh, f fuck, I can't speak.